Welcome to Sykes Accounting and Consulting Radio Show. I am your host, Anthony Sykes. Welcome everyone to the RantRadioNetwork.com. I'm Anthony Sykes and my co-host, uh, Cheryl Bohannon. Give us a call at 855-693-4897. Let us know what's taxing you. So how are you, Cheryl? I'm good. I'm good this morning. <laughs> right. Just... Um, uh oh. <laughs> yeah, learning some new things about taxes. It's just you learn a little bit every day, a little bit every week. It could be draining. Oh my gosh. Well, taxes started in 1862. Uh, it was created by a Republican. Why? Why? Oh, Abraham just, Lincoln. That was for the war up effort. Right there. That was I'm for the war kidding. effort. He, he had to create taxes um, and he created the commissioner of. Internal Revenue Service and the nation's first income tax. It was uh, 3% on incomes between $600 and $10,000 and 5% on incomes of more than $10,000. So that was it. That's how old it is. Now, in 1867, uh, public opposition to the tax, Congress cut the tax rate in 1868 until 1913. So 90% of all revenue came from taxes on liquor, beer, wine, and tobacco. See, that's where they need to keep it versus our income, because I don't know what they're doing with the money at this point. Yeah, they run the government. Uh-huh. In 1872, taxes they running were running something repeated. all right <laughs> <laughs> with them nice lifetime salaries and positions for some of those people and really good medical that our tax dollars are paying for well, that's that's what keeps the government going actually today right. july 1st is a couple first here the gas the gas dropped gasoline tax may drop to california has a a Woo! uh well don't don't get excited maybe <laughs> It may or may not drop uh, Probably from not. the Schwarzenegger, Schwarzenegger. <laughs> Ooh, what you just call me, Willis? <laughs> <laughs> the Schwarzenegger administration. <laughs> I can't believe that went out on the air. Uh, 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 <laughs> his administration pegged to the, because... Uh, people were conserving gas, and uh, because of that, uh, the revenues from the gas tax to the state were going down. And so what they did, they pegged the gas tax to revenues. And when uh, the revenues uh, for gasoline went down, they raised the uh, gas tax, or actually the revenues from the gas tax, if it went down, they just raised the gas tax to keep the revenue the same in order to balance the budget. So today is an adjustment day. Uh, the gas tax may go up because gasoline has gone down. Conservation has gone up. We aren't, we're driving more fuel efficient vehicles. However, we're driving and we're driving less, but the state needs the money. So they are raising or may raise the gas tax. Oh. Uh, so that's how that one works. But also, for all employers in California who have employees um, of, I guess, at least one. I don't, I don't know what the minimum is. I have not checked. But today starts the sick leave. You have to give 24 hours of sick leave. That is uh, 24 hours a year. So... Mm. Um, uh, it can so be, so it's not accumulated. Like it, you have to give it to them. Well, it can be accumulated. You can have X amount per hour's work. You can have, you know, the whole 24 and, and, and so on. I mean, the rules aren't, uh, that, uh, that hard and fast, but again, you should look it up on the EDD website, uh, check with, uh, your, if you use an outside payroll service because they have to begin to accruing it, this is even if your company does not have uh, or did not have before uh, any kind of benefits such as sick leave or vacation 
or anything like that other than the state mandated things such as mm. Family Leave Act or whatever. Now every employer must have that 24 hours. Now again, it could be if they're less than 10 or so, it may not apply. I don't really know. Okay. And so I suggest that everybody go out there and, That's awesome, and, and take a look at it. But today like was the start of that also. Okay. Okay. So they have to legally give you at least 24 hours a year. Now you can possibly accumulate more. Yeah, you if they, they legally they, yeah. they at least just have to give yeah, you those. They have 24. to give you at least twenty four hours. Wow, so that's up there with those breaks. Like they legally have yeah. to give you. Wow. Yeah. Now, if you and and it's if you work thirty two hours or more. Mm -hmm. So if you're less than thirty two hours, I don't know if that affects you or not. So uh, we'll see. But uh, looking over the the past uh, week or so. Uh, two historic things. The Affordable Care Act has been yes. affirmed in terms of the subsidies in states that did not have their own, I guess, marketplaces. So mm -hmm. it looks like affordable care will be here to stay. And then ha, the ha, ha, rights ha, ha. for um, uh, gays and lesbians to marry and be treated equally, that has been affirmed. So that's going to change taxes, <laughs> and that's why I bring that up, because uh, the tax returns in the past, because California, um, uh, I guess, viewed it and accepted it, it would show up as domestic partner, partner. Mm -hmm. uh, but the federal, they basically had to file uh, single uh, or something to that effect. So now all that, that programming is kind of will, will be redone, and they will show up just like any um, a regular heterosexual couple. So husband, wife, and so on. So would the tax bracket so be the same? Too? Tax brackets will be now they they take they take advantage of the married tax bracket, mm -hmm. and so the benefit of that is Social Security will now get more monies in because uh, the married couples now will be contributing in to Social Security, and and you say well. When they were single, if they were working, they did. Right. But it's something different when you are married because part of that other spouse's income to Social Security is credited to them, to the, the other spouse. That's true, because so before you couldn't now, get anything. Now it's, it's, it's there. So all those other rights kind of go along. So they, they, they not only benefits. get the, yeah, the benefit of, of um, you know, being married, they also have some of those detractions married, of boo, if there is a divorce, boo, that spouse right. now can get part of their pension, part of their Social Security. Security. Whole lot of rules kind of change, and and uh, the whole ball game is changing. So uh, we we shall see in the, in the near future how how that's going to happen. That's good. I'm excited because you can be with somebody for years and then find out you're not entitled to anything, yeah, or don't get anything, and that's that's. That's a big slap in the face, among other things. Yes, it is. Especially yes, if they is. were bread, the breadwinner and so on. Yeah. So that's a huge win. Yeah. That's a huge win for the community. Yay! That it is. That it is. So. But tax-wise, yeah. we still got to pay. Tax-wise, <laughs> nothing. We it's, still got to pay. It's, it's changed. So they may save in taxes because uh, now they're, well, they, they now hit the, the tax bracket creep. Because it's single, uh, while it may have been a higher rate than married joint, joint. Mm -hmm. that they have the higher incomes, they're going to have the the marriage penalty just like uh, everyone else. Uh, and in that, if they were single, they might have gotten a lower tax total hmm. than if they were married. So. Uh, or, yeah, if they were married, so all that is, is kind of going to change. Wow. So it's, it's, it's going to be interesting, I and guess, And it's probably from like six, now six going months. forward. It's, or so go, people who've already been together 15, 20 years. Well, yeah, you can't amend those returns and all right, that. Right. But it would be now going forward. forward uh, any, I, I would assume, any marriages this year, even before the Supreme Court came out, would be upheld so uh they it would start in, in what if anybody got married prior to then 
Probably not, huh? No, no. It, they it, would, it, they it would, would be upheld. It, it would count. Okay. It, it would count. That's my understanding. I have not read it. I have not gone through. I would be sure, any just of in it. case, so, if I was, you know, married to a yeah married. So and, someone they they should check with their, um, uh, you know, I guess in two places. Uh, the, the tax person may or may not know because it's so new, mm. uh, but your attorney uh, should be able to pull that information out or they can look it up and, and go through the volumes of the Supreme Court ruling themselves, <laughs> so, uh, whichever they, they, they choose to do, but it's it's out there. Right, out right, there. right. That's a big win. Yeah. That's a That's a big win. Yay! That's it. That's it. And uh, before I get into any of my rants, I got a couple of them today. I'm uh -oh. I'm pissed off at my what do you call that? Uh, that that uh, uh, I don't know what they're called. Uh, uh, destruction, document destruction. I canceled a a, uh -oh. a my my account, and they still won't pick the stuff up. They won't pick up the containers. I don't understand. I paid my <laughs> bill. I paid it twice, as a matter of fact. And they just leave it. I call. Nobody returns They my leave call. it so they can bill you for <laughs> another month for having them. So I'd like to know anybody out there in the audience, if you have a similar experience, <laughs> give us a call. 855-693-4897. They leave them so they I've can bill you Because I've had it up again. to here. <laughs> or here. You have least. no ceilings to go, huh? <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, man, this it, it is frustrating. I mean, they, you know, they're, they're sitting there, and I, I want to charge them rent. I maybe say that if I could do that to get it out, they say, "Yeah, we'll pick it up." Told me a month ago they would pick it up, and it's still there in my office. Wow! Did you get a bill for the month? No, I haven't got a bill yet. And what what really was the anger on top of the irony and frustration? The guy shows up to, we had the order to come in to, to empty, empty them, them, but not to pick them up. Oh, shoot. So I said, they're empty. And he said, well, I can't pick them up because they didn't give me the order to pick them up. And I didn't want to beat up the, the guy. <laughs> but anyway, we'll talk more about that after the break. You're listening to the Sykes Accounting and Consulting Radio Show. We'll be right back. Been in an accident? Then you need your vehicle professionally repaired? That's exactly what you get when you bring your vehicle to Greg's Auto Body Repair. Three quotes within minutes. We will provide everything you need for a hassle-free auto body repair, from an accurate estimate to working with your insurance company. We will get your vehicle to its pre-accident condition as soon as possible. Greg's Auto Body has been serving Los Angeles County and local cities since 1970. Call us at 562-789-1300. Looking for some swag? Make sure to check out MonsterClothing.com. They got everything from V-necks, T-shirts, hoodies, baby dolls. And remember, custom orders are always welcome. And much more. They're just not on the site yet. www.MonsterClothingCO.com. Or call them at 888-49-MONSTER. 888-49-MONSTER. Hablamos Espanol. do 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 it's one thing to own a business, it's another to promote it. That's why thousands of business owners rely on Monster Marketing Group. Design, print, mail, custom mailers, all for as little as 29 cents delivered. That includes posting. Send to a neighborhood, zip code, or an entire city. With just a simple call, 888-49-MONSTER, you can easily promote your business, sales, events, grand openings, send coupons, and much more. Your mail delivers in as little as five days. No dealing with the mailing list or paperwork. Monster Marketing does all the heavy lifting. Get started now by calling 888-49-MONSTER or go to monstermg.com. Monster Marketing Group. We deliver. We give you results. We can prove it. Protech Carpet Tile and Care provides professional cleaning services for carpet, tile, grout, upholstery, and fine area rugs. Protech technicians are professionally trained and certified cleaning and restoration experts. We specialize in restoring damage caused by heavy soil and odor. We can remove challenging spots such as coffee, tea, ink, gum, wine, and many more. We have saved our customers thousands of dollars on new flooring and furniture expenses 
with our advanced cleaning processes. Call for a free estimate at 562-447-4300 and visit us on our website, www.myprotechsite.com. Hey, this is Joe Perez, owner at Protec. Just reminding you that Protec Carpet and Tile Care is your professional choice. Welcome to Sykes Accounting and Consulting Radio Show. I am your host, Anthony Sykes. Welcome back, everyone. You're watching RantRadioNetwork.com. I'm Anthony Sykes, my co-host, Cheryl <laughs> Bohannon. Yeah, I haven't had any coffee. That's all right. Give us a call at 855-693-4897. Let us know what's taxing you. I was ranting about a company called Shredit. Um, a, they would be good, except they won't pick up their containers. Anyway, enough of wow. that. Let me give you your tax tip of the day here. A, uh, in 1909, uh, President Taft recommended con Congress impose a constitutional amendment that would give the government the power to tax incomes without apportioning the burden among the states in line with population. That was interesting. So you would have to pay according, your tax rate would be according to the population. So California, rightly so, has a high tax. Hey, that, that's what they people. did. Congress also levied a 1% tax on net corporate income of more than $5,000. All right. <laughs> Man, so, they just find new taxes to give to us <laughs> to make us pay for something to breathe. They're going to tax air and they're going to tax water. When they start taxing air and water, ooh, I'm going to go live in a bubble. Well, they actually have, I think it was it was a county, uh, Berkeley. Uh, there's a there's a, 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 a tax on water, bottled water. I think wow. that was where I read a proposal tax. But um, Wow. Yeah. It's just they're gonna get taxed for everything anyway between that thing. and raising the minimum wage i hope minimum wage you turn around and make some money you gotta put turn around and give it away to taxes it's <laughs> like i make 15 dollars, but <laughs> 10 of it gotta go to taxes so i really only made five well, you oh, cut your expenses goodness. you work from home see that's what we want to talk about okay <laughs> with working from home and at least to um just so people know the affordable care actually helped get put some money back in people's pockets the only problem is maybe you didn't get the right 1095a maybe you got the wrong 1095a and it rejected your whole return and then you call cover california and it might take a few weeks for you to get a corrected 1095a so you can even file a amended return so maybe all the shenanigans will align at some point with the moon and the stars so we can actually get what we need to file our taxes since they're taxing everything but hey thank goodness we have something so with taxes and home-based businesses because if we got to shrink these expenses so we're not paying so much in taxes what types of uses could a home-based business give us from a tax perspective or actually what type of tax deductions can we get if we have a home-based business to minimize those costs well a lot of people are, are um you know with the technology uh your your your, mm -hmm. your cell phone is or, or, or smartphone, I mean, there's two, the cell phone, you can have the basic one and all you do is make calls on, but the smartphones, they're, they're, they're actually computers. You can send all kinds of data. You can do a lot of things mm -hmm. with it. So you can actually be anywhere in the, in the country or maybe the world and do business. So you, you don't really need to necessarily have an office unless you have you know, products or, or you had support staff or something like that. So if you are a, a, a consultant and you, you're a, you know, you just one person in your company, which is you, mm -hmm. you could work from home. Now I wouldn't advise that you meet your, your, your clients or customers or prospects in your home. You could always go to a, 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 a what they call a virtual site a, a meeting room type of place and and, and so on mm -hmm. but the bulk of your business could be done out of your home and that'll cut a lot of your expenses and there's a lot of things that you can take if you do work from home mm -hmm. uh you can take some of the expenses uh they're they're 
uh, you know, you, certain rules you have to to uh, follow. One, you have to set aside a space. It, it just can't share the kitchen table. Right. Uh, you have to have a separate room that is designed to be an office. Yeah. Uh, that may or may change, and I think is kind of changing to some extent because IRS now gives you a, a an alternative. They will give you a flat rate home and office deduction of up to fifteen hundred dollars uh, based on that criteria. Or if you think you should have more, now you have to go through all the steps of the, the square footage uh, and, and the, the expenses and all this other thing and itemizing that out. Okay, so say I um, have a pedicure business and I use one of the bedrooms in my home to see clients. Okay. And... I do my own towels, like I wash and everything from home. So at that point, with part of my water and then my electricity now become deductible for my business since I'm washing my own towels and seeing clients and they're, you know, getting their feet things, feet and stuff done in the tubs in the home. But, but my, but the off of the room is set up like a, um mini salon like there's a chair there's you know tables mm -hmm. there's like you could really sit down and get it there's a booth where you would sit and get everything done. like you could really get everything done but it's just one room that i dedicate in my home to see clients and do their manis and petties okay so now at that point the square footage of that room right is deductible even if i pay a mortgage or i pay rent Right. I mean, it, it, it would be kind of a ratio of that, that room to the total. Okay. Uh, so that, whatever that percentage uh, that is. is. And then you would get a percent of all those utilities, the mortgage and rent or whatever. Okay. A and uh, so on. Now, the, the uh, I guess, detergent or bleach or fabric softener that you buy mm -hmm. if you want to really keep good records, which you should. I shouldn't say if you want to, you, you should. should. Uh, you could buy a, a, a separate soap and, and so on mm -hmm. just for those tiles. And, of course, the tiles that you buy are deductible also. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. by doing that, now you have as much as those expenses for the business isolated. Okay. So basically, if I'm going to do that, I just have to keep very good specific records of what part of my expenses in my home are for personal right. and what part are for business use and right. I can prove it. Okay. Right. Okay. So, I mean, what about, but I know, um, outside of just, I just threw that out there. I do that profession out there, but I hear daycares are something like totally different. Well, daycares, there, there's a, uh, they give you a little bit more for daycare okay. only because, uh, it's very hard to keep, you know, X number of children locked up in one room. Uh, so yeah. you, you can, <laughs> they, they, they kind of would, three or more, would, would have the, the run of the house pretty much. Now you can lock them out obviously of some rooms, but you cannot lock them into one room and that, that then gets Not into without something. them, um, driving you crazy yeah, that, after 20 yeah. minutes. That 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 kind of takes it into a, a, a different direction and, <laughs> and you don't want to do that. So uh, that's why. That's OK. Why. OK. Well, that's true. That's true. You don't that that's that's true. OK. OK. But same rules apply with food. But then I guess the lar the more you do at home, the larger um, the percentage becomes that you can deduct for your business. Um. Cause like with yeah. a daycare, you're feeding kids. So yeah. that's like gas, that's water. That's, you know, that's more of your utilities probably plus food. But it, say you have a pedicure business, you might not necessarily be feeding people for in two hour spans. Right. You know what I'm saying? You might have some snack, a table with some snacks or something like that, that you have out, but you're not necessarily deducting gas and your grocery bill because you're not feeding them. Right. Or, no. or what if you are feeding them? If well, you're feeding clients after they've uh, been there after a couple uh, hours, uh, okay. can you just like part of that meal for them? Well, if you, you, again, you need to buy that separate for the daycare. You're buying the food for the children separate. Uh, it's, it's very difficult. 
if you go and you buy, you know, a, a, a uh, box of cereal mm-hmm. and, you know, the family has some and then the, 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 the daycare children have some and, you know, you can't really allocate that out. <laughs> so you buy your 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 groceries for the daycare business mm-hmm. or you buy the food specifically for the the uh personal the for your house. manicure or medicare or, <laughs> medicure <laughs> medicure <laughs> there we go and pedicure 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 <laughs> he's a pedicure it is pedicure uh, all the uh, stuff business is. so uh, i i i went to a barber shop and 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 um uh, used to go to this barber shop till he, he 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 closed down but on uh, on Saturdays the first Saturday or something to that effect he would buy breakfast so he would have uh you know th- this spread of uh eggs and and and, and bacon and so on out Ooh, there yum. and it, it was pretty good and 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 then you know I kind of thought, well, okay, but it was far enough away from the guys cutting the hair that, you know, you get hair flying across the room. I never yeah. saw that. No, no, no. It, it, it was in a in a totally different, I mean, it, it, area. So there was never any, I mean, he had covers on him. Too. Oh, okay. I mean, it wasn't like it was Just open out. or whatever. Uh, but it, it, it was there for anyone who wanted breakfast. And I thought that was a pretty that good, was cool. that, that, that was a pretty good marketing tip. And uh, the person who took over after him did that, but then they forgot their marketing and they kind of went off in a, in a, in a different direction, different direction. Uh, they put a lot of their own um, personal music playing. And, and unfortunately, they they were of a a extremely religious blend so you come in and then you have all these these (laughs) young men coming in on a saturday (laughs) listening to these 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 gospel songs and that just wasn't a good idea i thought i wanted to a couple times i said you know that's this is just not a good idea you're chasing away your 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 your, your clientele (laughs) come in and sleep (laughs) Trying to get a haircut. <laughs> yeah. And then say, you need Jesus. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, really? <laughs> anyway, we'll talk more about it after the break here. We're watching <laughs> Rant Radio Sykes. You're listening to the Sykes Accounting and Consulting Radio Show. We'll be right back. Business that needs to get noticed? Your ideas need a great website. And then Infuse, we build simple, clean, and efficient websites. We believe that even the wildest ideas should come to life in a beautiful way. We build responsive sites, e-commerce sites, and even help with business email setup and search engine optimization. Every great idea needs a great website. Start your new look today. Check us out at www.enfuse.com. That's www.enfuse.com. Or call us at 800-542-4783. Again, that's 800-542-4783. Enfuse, we get it done. Real Estate Rant and AGR Realtors are proud supporters of Michael Aguilar and Associates, advocates for stroke awareness and integrative health care. In February 2012, I suffered a stroke due to high blood pressure. I was rushed to the hospital where I was admitted for the next 30 days. I was initially told I may have to stay in the hospital for about three months, but I made rapid improvements in my recuperation and continued to improve to this day. When Michael left the hospital, he did not have insurance to cover his rehabilitation, so he focused on integrative health care to get better. At the end of 2013, seeing a need for stroke awareness, Michael started his own company, Michael Aguilar & Associates, to focus on creating awareness about the dangers of high blood pressure and stroke. If you would like more information, please call me at 562-464-7297 or you can visit my website at www.strokeawareness101.com. Michael Aguilar and Associates, creating awareness and saving lives one person at a time. We are The Three Guys Rant with Arvin, Mike, and Phil. Make sure to check us out every week at the 3 Guys Rant. Dot com and you'll find out what they say we're faces for radio and voices for the deaf damn right have you seen yourself lately hey i'm audio candy 
All right, always tune in each week so you can hear the really absurd news and talk with the Three Guys Rant. Arvin, how do they reach us? Call us at 855-69-3-GUYS. 855-69-3-GUYS. Do we have your attention? When it comes to tequila, two things matter. Heart and passion. Never compromising integrity for mass production. Number one tequila delivers the goods. Taste the heart and passion of Mexico in every bottle. We make it right. We make it fun. Superior tequila. There's only number one. There's only number one. There's only number one. We are the Three Guys Rant, coming to you live every Thursday from 5 to 6. You can call us at 855-69-THE-THREE-GUYS. <laughs> it's not the three guys. This is why you should turn in because one has Tourette's. The you other really, one's illiterate. You really should listen in. You never know what's going to happen. 855 69 three guys. G U Y S and the number three, not the. Faces yeah. for radio, voices for the deaf. Look forward to talking to you. Hey, I'm Audio Candy. I don't know about you guys. <laughs> Welcome to Sykes Accounting and Consulting Radio Show. I am your host, Anthony Sykes. Welcome, everyone, to RantRadioNetwork.com. I'm Anthony Sykes, Cheryl Bohannon. Give us a call at 855-693-4897. Let us know what's taxing you. Visit our website, www.sykesaccounting.com. If you have a tax question... Uh, or you need help. We do taxes. We do tax resolution. We do accounting, payroll. Uh, call the office at 562-864-2341. We do offer a free consultation. We're talking uh, about, let me give you the next tax tip here. In 1913, uh, as the threat of war loomed, Wyoming became the 36th state and the, the 36th and the last state needed to ratify the 16th Amendment. Uh, the amendment stated Congress shall have the power to lay and collect taxes on incomes from whatever source derived. Keep that in mind. Without apportionment among the several states and without regard to any census or enumeration. Later, Congress adopted a 1% tax on net personal income of more than 3000 and a surtax of 6% on incomes of more than 500000 uh, It also repealed the 1909 corporate income tax. The first Form 1040 was introduced. So that meant there was no corporation income tax in 1913. And for those people who claim that the, uh, the senators had walked out and so on, and that the tax was never ratified, that didn't hold water because the state of Wyoming was the last state needed to ratify it, and thus we have what we have today. Man, we were born <laughs> in the wrong year. Born in the wrong year. Yeah, I remember now, that, that seemed like a lot of money, but it uh, it, it bought <gasps> a lot more. Nick, I mean, a nickel could buy you a loaf of bread and maybe a jar of candy, so... Now it can't even get you 15 minutes on a parking meter. That's true. Yeah, so it gets you, I think a nickel gets you about one minute or two minutes or something that like that. That is so sad. So, That's true. Anyhow. That is so true. Oh, my gosh. We have, okay. we have something. Uh, we were talking about um, home-based businesses and just taxes on those businesses. What if you have multiple businesses in the home? Well, you still have, you have to allocate it among the, the uh, 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 the square footage that you're using again, uh, it's got to be at least 300 square feet, something like that. Okay, or so, is that maximum use? And then two, I guess at some point, um, what if you say only have one room, two rooms in my house that I use for personal? Everything else is business. Well, I have a client that that does that. I mean, they they have a house, and the only room they don't use for business is the one they sleep in. We kind of sidestep all that because they don't particularly document that well, um, and uh, they're constantly out uh, in other sites and so on. So, but yes, 
it is possible to do that and their their type of business they have a lot of people coming and going and so on so it is possible to just use a good a large percent of your home for business right we just we don't we take the kind of take the expenses we stay away from that office and home issue just because there's enough expenses we think to go around Ooh, record keeping and books <laughs> books and record keeping record keeping and books don't and then i did read where um if you're disabled mm -hmm. you get some deductions and perks too and then but i know it was like from the investment world if you're disabled and disability is your only income they won't let you open an account I know they won't do that. Um, right. Even within insurance, somebody else has to get it for you. Like if that's your only source of income, they don't allow you to purchase, you know, hundreds of thousands of insurance with the disability income you receive for tax free. Yeah. <laughs> I know well, they don't let you do that one. Well, you actually, uh, IRS has come up with a kind of IRA for uh, disabled uh, individuals. And you know, that would actually make sense. I know of three elder parents, and when I say elder parents, they're in their 80s and 90s, and they are taking care of their children who are in their 50s that have disabilities. Even now, like even children with autism and other types of debilitating diseases to where they're, they really can't function to take care of themselves. Like, what is it that they can do? Because technically, you have a child that you're going to now be worried about how is he going to take care of himself for the rest of his life. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Let me read a, a quick blurb here. The Internal Revenue Service released proposed regu regulations, which means it's already there on a new federal law authorizing states to offer specially designed tax favored able accounts to people with disabilities who became disabled before age 26. Um, achieving a better life experience. That's what ABLE stands for. Account per, uh, provision was signed into law in December, uh, recognizing a special financing, special financial burdens faced by families raising children with disabilities. ABLE accounts are designed to enable people with disabilities and their families to save for and pay for disability related expenses so it's kind of like hmm. an ira for a person with disabilities that's helpful and you can you can put it aside and so on and then that day when if it ever comes that uh you know you're the the people who were uh helping you either you know the time marches on become too old uh to help you there is some money and you can kind of help yourself or the next generation of caregivers. Uh, let's say, you know, you, your parents have one child that's disabled and they, they set this up and now they've become older and, and they can't help anymore. So their, their, their siblings, their brothers and sisters now can, but they don't have to take on that extra burden because there is this money set aside. Hmm. And now they can draw from that money to help support this person. And, you know, they, they don't have to do a lot. I, I always know of cases where, you know, uh, you, you're, you're their uh, uh, brother or sister has come to live with them mm -hmm. because the parents have, have deceased or, or can't take care of them anymore. Now, they have an added burden because they may have children of their own or so on. So that's what this is designed for so that's that they helpful. don't, they don't get dumped into an institution or, or, or whatever. Or that's worse. helpful. So, yeah, you know, it, it, there's a lot of things out there you should, you know, take a look at. This is sort of a specialty item if you have that, that kind of uh, situation. Uh, but situation. That's helpful. That's, yeah. that's a tremendous help. Because, like I said, I know of three elders that are taking care of children. And I think um, the children they're taking care of, there were issues. I know with one lady, um, she ended up getting, she's going to get a check for her son for the rest of his life. Not only because of his disability, but because some of the, let me get this correct, the, the immunization 
that they were giving him when he was younger caused all these other defects. Mm -hmm. And, and which I was always wondering because, you know, now the number of immunizations kids, babies and infants get is it's a lot more of them than when I was growing up. And you got to think like you're putting all these drugs and chemicals into a body that's not developed yet. Something about that cannot be right. And somebody's, some kids' bodies can take it and be okay. Other ones end up with severe side effects to where they have deformalities for the rest of their life and can't like function. So she actually received some money behind some of the immunizations that he received because some were too strong for his body and then some other ones caused other types of um, defects that they found were linked to those immunizations, mm. which I was like, oh my God, I knew it. You know, me and my my chemical and drug <laughs> drug conspiracy saying they're trying to kill us but um she's in her 90s and he's see yeah, almost in her she's in her late 80s early 90s and he's in his 50s wow. and she's still taking care of him so like she would have been a person to benefit from something like this ira for him right because now it's like, what do you do? I mean, she's been saving money over the years because it was like there was nothing in place before that anybody would recognize right. um, for th that population. So that's huge. Is it deductible? Um, or is it just an account? I don't know. It may be like, like a is Roth it just IRA. A, it may not be deductible going in, but tax free, free coming, coming out. out, something like that. Contributions in a total amount up to the annual gift tax exclusion amount. So Which was it's like 11, 12, that's a big chunk of money. 14,000 can be made uh, on an annual basis. Distributions are tax free if used to pay qualified disability expenses. expenses. So therefore it, it appears looking, looking at big. this that it is, it's, it's, it's taxed income, but it's tax free if it's used to pay for their expenses. Um, that's big. And then it's the gift, gift tax, tax exclusion, which is, um, that increases a little bit every year. That's, that's a big, that's a bigger amount that you could put into a traditional IRA. I'll be the traditional IRAs is only like $5,500 a year or something like that. And the gift yeah. taxes are like what? 13, 14,000. The gift tax is 14,000. Mm -hmm. Uh, but you have that's to, a much larger amount, almost uh, double. Well, yeah, but they would have more a greater need. I mean, if you well, have yeah, blindness or, you know, some kind of physical disability, then you're going to be spending more money uh, that is to, true. to to do that as opposed to someone who just has, um, you know, uh, set aside retirement and now they're uh, going to the beach every day or, <laughs> or not. <laughs> right, 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 right. That <laughs> is mountains true. Mountains every other week or that is, thereabouts. So, that is true. Yeah. That is true. And it's expensive. Some of those places can be very expensive, even with long term care and um, having they know seniors do better staying at home. But sometimes it can be more costly having somebody come to your it can be not more costly, but it's costly to have somebody come to your home. Um, but even when you're in an institution, that can become even more costly or so much per day. Hundred uh, some two hundred dollars per day. Institution, we gotta take a break and pick Pay it up two. when we come back. You're listening to the Sykes Accounting and Consulting Radio Show. We'll be right back. A home is the biggest investment in most people's lives. Buying or selling should be a positive experience. Whether you want to be a wealthy real estate investor or just trying to find a place to call home. At AJR and Associates, we focus on the client's needs. We understand the market better than most. Let us bring the value to you and make the right choice. AJR and Associates, making your dream house a reality. Call us today for a free consultation at 562-882-1976. Or you can log on to www.hrrealtors.com. With the track record of great results, bringing knowledge, wisdom, and expertise to you. Hablamos Español. Looking for a delicious, fresh family meal that's ready when you are and easy on your budget? Welcome to Piara Pizza. We make our pizzas with handmade dough, 100% real cheese, and tomato sauce blended with our own spices. Nothing is ever frozen. 
We always have large pepperoni and cheese pizzas fresh and waiting for you for only $5. Or choose one of our specialty pizzas. We have veggie, meat lovers, supreme, and Hawaiian. Add an order of our amazing hot wings, cheesy bread, or breadsticks. Our locations are ultra modern, ultra clean, and open seven days a week. Visit any one of our locations today. Or check us out on the web at www.piarapizza.com. Piara Pizza. Fresh, hot, and ready for you when you come in. Stop in for your Piara Pizza today. The experts know that for pastry, Baker's Bodega has it all. Exclusive brands like Westco Bankmark, Satin Ice, and Pastry Pride. One-on-one -on -one day seminars for cake decorating and gelatin art. So for our service, wide range of ingredients and supplies, and for the low prices, Baker's Bodega has it all. But you don't need to be an expert. Baker's Bodega, 7869 Paramount Boulevard in Pico Rivera. Come, we're waiting for you. It's hot out here. I need a drink. Have a mucho macho michelada. What's a michelada? Michelada is a Mexican Bloody Mary made with beer. All you have to do is get bucket-sized michelada, open it up, pour it in your favorite beer, and you're good. What if you don't like beer? You can use it in lemon-lime soda, vodka with lime, or tequila with lemon-lime soda. Sounds delicious. Where do you find it? You can find it at your favorite store, or you can go to muchomachomichelada.com. Find us on Twitter and Facebook. Hey, people, are you ready? Are you ready for some football? Uh, no, it's called a triple threat. Wait, a triple threat of what? Entertainment, gossip, and pure fun. It's Tinseltown Talkies, Thursdays at 6.30 p.m. Only on www.rantradionetwork.com. Don't miss out if you want to be a part of all the action. With Rasha and Pimo. That's right. See you then. Welcome to Sykes Accounting and Consulting Radio Show. I am your host, Anthony Sykes. Welcome, everyone. You're watching RantRadioNetwork.com. I'm Anthony Sykes, Cheryl Bohannon. Give us a call at 855-693-4897. Let us know what's taxing you. Uh, visit our website. Sign up for the newsletter at uh, www.sykesaccounting.com. Friend us on Facebook, link with us on LinkedIn, tweet with us on Twitter. We have a lot of information out there. If you have a question that you'd like me to answer on the air, uh, send it to my uh, email, asykes at sykesaccounting.com. Uh, call the office. Uh, we do a lot of business consulting, a lot of taxes, tax resolution. If you owe IRS and you're trying to figure out how to pay it off, or if you can't pay it off, don't maybe there run, is a way. Don't uh, run. We give a free consultation, 562-864-2341. And our tax tip of the day. Don't run from them. Don't run. They come and get everything. In 1931, <laughs> the IRS intelligent unit used an undercover agent to gather evidence against gangster Al Capone. Capone was convicted of tax evasion and sentenced to 11 years. And that was the start of criminal investigation for the IRS. Wow. Isn't, wait, wait, isn't there a um, tax law that any proceeds or profit used from illegal activity is 100% taxable? So if you make a, if your dollar is a profit, then you have to give that to, like you can actually function legally, I mean, for tax, from a tax perspective, you can function, but you just, whatever you make, you're just supposed to give to them if it's from illegal activity. I forgot the name of it. Uh, is it how I've, that goes? I've, I've heard of it. I don't know. I don't know if that's true or not. Okay. Uh, I know I've heard in, about that. In, in Kentucky, uh, the state does tax illegal activity as a business. So you can, you know, you can. So you'll go a, to jail for a crime, but not tax evasion. That's right. That's right. Oh, so gosh. You pay your taxes. Actually, that's how they catch a lot of criminals is not so much by the crime as by the money they received from doing right. the crime, crime because they can't hide it. I mean, they, they, they get too flamboyant. 
if they stuck it in a mattress, then no one would know how wealthy they are. Right, 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 so, right. It, I believe it is. I forgot yeah. the thingy um, for it, but any proceeds that are made from illegal activity, cause the only reason why is because, um, you know, I know of, a, uh, I have a few clients that have uh, dispensaries. Okay. And, you know, at one point it was legal for California, but it was still illegal on the federal side right. so when they were getting set up and doing everything and you know just getting um their merchant services and their business licenses and all these different things it was like oh you're fine at the state but uh this is still illegal at the federal level so what's gonna have to happen is any proceeds you make is a hundred percent a hundred percent of that profit has to go back to you know, the IRS, he's like, well, what if I make a dollar? That whole dollar has to go. So it was just like he could function, but any so basically anything he made, he basically had to give up because it was considered illegal at the IRS level. I was like, oh, my gosh, well, at least she won't go to jail, jail for taxes. She might go to jail for something else, but it won't be tax evasion. It might just be having a dispensary because they don't they haven't legalized that yet. So I was like, what? Well, That's a law. I, 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 I suspect it is after all the legal deductions. So right. the salary and so on. Right. So if you had a profit, which would be taxed, it's just all, it's just 100% tax. It's 100% tax. Right. Wow. So basically you're functioning to pay somebody else. Yeah. But doesn't say you had to have a profit. No, because you know, and businesses are not profitable every year. Yeah, yeah. Some are. Some are lucky enough in, to be, but you can pay it all in salary. Then they just pay income tax on the salary, but it doesn't have to have a profit. Hmm. Crowdfunding. Just speaking of profit, uh, hmm. crowd <laughs> ways to do things. Ways crowd, to do things. Crowdfunding is a is a way to get uh, investors. And uh, the state of California came out with a... a that's like GoFundMe. Uh, yeah, that's what it is. I mean, it's, it's, it's GoFundMe and, and so on. But the the when the Jobs Act of uh, passed in April of 2012, it paved the way for investment crowdfunding. Today, you or your clients can find various website examples of this. Crowdfunding platforms, startup business funding, Easy business loans, online fundraising sites, online giving to your organization increases fundraising, fundraising for personal causes. Uh, the term crowdfunding may refer to crowdsourcing, and it's really ways that you, you solicit uh, individuals for your investment or for your, your cause or whatever it is. Thank you. <laughs> Wear the little bit fur. <laughs> <laughs> and so that's that's it. Now is this Is that money? taxable? It could be. It very well could be. It may or may not be deductible. Mm. Um So you gotta report it as income? Well, it, it it depends upon how this thing is set up. If you make donations, they may not be deductible because it may not it may not be a 501c. That's the only reason we way it would be. So there's a lot of uh, uh, questions that, that that come up, um, and and of course you asked one: Are the funds taxable? Uh, how do I report them, and so on? Uh, you you have to look at the IRS publication 525, and that'll That'll kind of give you a, an idea, uh, but uh, if you use it uh, or invest in, you know, one of these crowdfunding platforms or go fund it, uh, you could be investing in a business and when it pays off, now you have a taxable event and you subtract the amount that you put in uh, from the amount that you received and that difference would be taxable. That's, that's one way of doing it. If you have given money to help uh, someone who, whose house burnt down, uh, that may not be tax deductible because it was just giving money. Uh, you can give money to anyone, but that doesn't make it deductible. 
So you have to be be careful and be sure about that. See, I need to give me a 5013C. That way anybody give me any money is deductible. <laughs> it's a tax write-off for you. You can donate and invest in me. Just invest in me. Donate and invest in me. And you can get a deduction. <laughs> versus just giving it away or burning it. Okay. Okay. I mean, that sounds like a good, hey, go fund me. That's a good, that, that's a that's a very good cause. I'm a good cause. You're a good cause. Yeah, yeah. Okay. You got to be a good cause, though. Yeah, all right. Okay. <laughs> My shoes wouldn't be a good cause. I wouldn't. I wouldn't use it for that. I would use it for. You, you wouldn't use other it for a cause. shoe fund. Huh? No shoe funds. No shoe funds. No, no shoe funds. Maybe a Super Bowl fund. Uh, okay. okay. You know, to go to the Super Bowl game. <laughs> No shoes, no shoes, no shoes. All right. So that may be deductible or may not be. It's called crowding. Well, no, that's just the that's just an overview name for it, crowdfunding, and and is it's 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 that's the name given to any kind of funding done by a a, a, a mass source. That's all. It's it's not. Hmm. It's, it's, it's it's you know you got GoFund, you have a whole lot of others, and they just come under that. You know, it's like. Uh, Where do they get these names from? That's like fishing. Crowd. Well, they use word fishing, but it's a scam. Well, fishing is easy. I mean, but it, it's not it like F I S H. No, it's, it's like P, P I. P -I. P yeah, and I'm like P H, and then I'm like fishing. Well, that fraud. That's, that that's scam. That that's that that's because uh, one, you're you're actually you know you're fishing if you use the F I S H. And you're you're trying to catch a fish. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now the other fishing, you're still trying to catch a fish, except it's a little more sinister in that you're trying to catch, like with the identity theft we have there, mm -hmm. you're trying to catch someone's uh, information so that you can use it for an illegal purpose. And and that brings us into our next segment there, uh, identity theft and ten things that we should, uh, everyone should look out for. Uh, to kind of reduce the 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 threat of their them losing uh, valuable information. That is true. Yeah. They always say protect your records, don't fall for scams. It says the IRS will not call you to demand immediate payment, nor will it call about taxes owed without first mailing you a bill. So be aware of threatening phone calls from someone claiming to be at the IRS or the Department of Treasury or the Treasury Inspector General for Tax Administration, and they give you some phone numbers. It says report ID theft to law enforcement. They want you to get a re police report. So if, you're, if you think your Social Security has been compromised, file a police report, and then there is a form they want you to complete for identity theft for the irs which is form number 14039 it's an identity theft affidavit and then it says understand your irs notices who really understands their irs notices like you get it you just see amount due or bill or credit but who really knows how to read an irs notice you aside from you <laughs> like aside from you like you're like what's the number oh that's the demand of payment oh that's this part like who knows how to read that like really and then they give you extra pages of other inserts that explain the stuff that they sent you and then so when it's all greek it's just like oh okay yeah right okay so i owe you some money for what happened what happened and that's when they have to call somebody like you um so we have to understand these notices that they send, but we need a class for the notices. Then it says to get an IP pin. So if you do have an identity theft issue, they'll give you an IP pin. It's a unique six digit number um, that a victim can use to file their actual return. So that means they won't even accept your return without this pin. Right. So they know that you're you. Um, if you learn about a data breach, and your information, your personal information being compromised. Please keep in mind, not every data be breach results in identity theft. But nine times out of ten, when somebody has some personal information that doesn't belong to them, I hate to say it, they don't do nice things with them. That's true. 
They don't say, oh, I found this. <laughs> Let me make sure the owner knows. Let me make sure I shred this ID so they don't have to worry about any of this. Most people don't do that. They're, they sell it. Ooh, what can I get for this? What can I get in this name? What can I buy? Or maybe I can sell it to somebody who could use it to do something. So nobody thinks about doing any of those things. Oh, um, um, I hear the tune, so looks like this is it for this, uh, this episode. Uh, I'm Anthony Sykes, Cheryl Bohannon, we'll see you on the next time.